Oh, hello. Welcome to Thursday Reflection. For some time I've been researching my family and I've discovered many interesting facts, such as where people were born, who they married, and um, what type of employment they had. But while I have been researching these facts, it, um, it's hard to know such as how did people meet and why did they get married and, and why some of my ancestors decided to migrate from the UK to other parts of the world. I know my father moved from his small village in Cambridge to Bedfordshire to be able to attend a private high school. But I do not know how he felt leaving the village where he used to play with his cousins. Before my father died, I was able to travel with him back to the village and this opened up a few more memories and stories. Memories are funny things and sometimes something would happen that would unlock a memory we have not thought about for a long time. Some would say it would be like my father and I traveling back to his village that unlocked childhood memories. Some say it is a smell that will prompt us or even a tune. But to remember something requires not only prompts, but reminders. I was, as I was preparing for this reflection, I thought how similar this is to the stories we read in the Bible. In the Hebrew scriptures, many of the stories we read were originally passed down orally, which worked well until something happened that made it necessary to commit these stories to a written text. Two significant incidences that happened were the exile to Babylon and the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The ancient stories were written down about the covenant between God and Abraham through to the beautiful songs of the Psalms and the promise of a Messiah that would set the Israelites free from their enemies. But these stories were not finalized into the Old Testament until the, after the death of Jesus, when Jerusalem fell in 70 AD. It took this significant event to make sure the memories of the special relationship between the Jewish, Jewish nation and God could be passed down to the forthcoming generations. An example of this special relationship can be found in Psalm 105. The Psalm starts by reminding us to give thanks to God and to make God's deeds known. It then reminds us because of these deeds, we should keep faithful to God. So the writings are working as a memory prompt. Let me read you a few verses. Um, Psalm 105, it's quite a long chapter, but um, let's see, let's see what we can find. Verse 5, remember the wonderful works he has done, that's God, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. And then he goes on to talk about the ancients. He can, the covenant that he made with Abraham has sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. Then it talks about how that Joseph was sold as a slave and um, that he was sent to Egypt. And then from the, out of Egypt, um, Moses was sent to rescue the enslaved Israelites. He then says that 
they were brought into the wilderness. But God remembered the promise that he had given to Abraham. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples. So Psalm 105 is like a history book. It's like looking at your ancestors. It's looking at what God had done. Where you are now is because of the things that had happened in the past. I read recently that scientists have discovered that we can permanently look in a memory when it is linked with something that is significant. For example, if you walk into someone's office, your brain immediately notes the location of the places of furniture, bookshelves, windows, etc. But in the future, your brain may not remember the arrangement of the office. In fact, you'll probably forget it. But if something significant does happen when you are there in the office, the brain will commit the setup of that room to your memory. The room will be linked to what you've learned inside it. I think that can be seen through the writings of the Greek scriptures, who have been moved by something to the point that when the writers wrote their reflections on the life of Jesus, Again, during the persecution by the Roman Empire, it became important to write down the stories that had been passed down orally of the many and wonderful works of Jesus. And through the help of the Holy Spirit, the books of the New Testament have helped us understand and come even closer to God. Many have felt the presence of God such as through walking or through the comfort that has been felt when going through bad times or through the joy of the birth of a child. To recall a specific incident requires what the scientists were talking about. That is, if during a specific moment something significant has to happen for the brain to commit that memory forever. But for many of us, like the Israelites of old, it's good to be reminded of the wonderful deeds that God to sustain our relationship. Apart from reading the stories written in the Bible, a significant action to help me remember what God has done for me is the sharing of communion. The act of communion reminds me of the Last Supper that Jesus took with his disciples. And as we partake of the elements of bread and wine, it reminds me of us meeting in communion with God and with others of our community. We give thanks for all that God has done for us and continues to do for us. We come together over this special meal, reminding us of the presence of God with us and that through love, we are reconciled to one another through the sharing of the peace. We are also reminded of the institution of the supper by Jesus but, and call upon the Holy Spirit so that it may deepen our awareness of God. After sharing the meal, we ask for God's continued blessing and are sent out to worship God and be a witness of God's love through not only how we act, but also what we do. And like the Psalms, we conclude with singing as this helps to confirm our identity as a community. A hymn we do not often sing, and it's probably because it's a bit long, but one which I think is wonderful as a prompt to remembering our relationship with God is from Together in Song number 534. Again, let me read a few verses.
Love is his word, love is his way. Feasting with friends, fasting alone, living and dying, rising again. Love, only love is his way. It goes on to say that love is his way, sharing his last Passover feast. Love is his mark through his uh, body. Love is his sign. Do this, he said, lest you forget all my deep sorrow. Love is his news in that we are chosen and called. Love is his name to hear his command, love one another, cousins and kin, as he has loved us. Love is his law, love is his word, love of the Lord, Father and Word, love of the Spirit, God ever one, love, only love is his word. So, as a Christian, like researching my ancestors, I am reminded who I am in relationship to my family. In my relationship with God, it is good to be reminded through a number of ways. Reading of the stories between God and the Israelites, the stories of Jesus, but also by the action of sharing communion. So until we meet again, I wish you a joyous time. Pull out some photographs, sing some favourite songs, have a cup of coffee, and unlock a happy memory or two. <laughs>